Hi, my name is Jeremy Chapman, and I'm going to be showing you how I built the MDT 2010 Beta 1 environment that did my Windows XP migration into Windows 7 RC build with applications and user state migration. So here we've got the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit 2010 Beta 1 Deployment Workbench open. That can be downloaded from the connect.microsoft.com portal and there you can get access to the bits and you can also install those and configure them and we're going to show how that is done uh, in this recording. So let's first take a look at what's in the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. So first off we'll see the Getting Started Guide. Now this will walk you through more or less what I'm going to show in this video. How to populate your deployment with the ingredients for an OS deployment including operating systems, applications, etc. Plus we have documentation, we have news, and the components. So here you can see the things that are required for Microsoft Deployment Toolkit to work and also it will give you links to each one of these things so that you can download them and install them as prerequisites uh, for deployment such as the Windows Automate Installation Kit. Now when I look at the distribution share we've built that in Beta 1 so that it has check marks to go through all of the main tasks the first task that we'll do is install the Windows Automate Installation Kit, which we've already done pre previous to this demo. Now we're going to create a distribution share. So I just take the default settings and hit create. Now I've got two check marks in my, uh, in my deployment workbench. So the next thing we have to do is install some operating system files. I'm going to point to uh, OS source files and look at the C drive and the deploy source. And we're going to point at an operating system and basically import that into this environment. So we're going to start out with Windows 7 Enterprise x86 and we're going to use the move option in this case because it is much faster to move those files into the deployment share and it will give us a name already pre-configured and move those files over for us. So after we have some operating systems installed, the next thing we can do is add some applications to our installation package. So as you saw in the previous demo of, of the build out from XP into Windows 7 RC, we had things like Microsoft Office Enterprise 2007 in there along with firewall apps and other applications. Now we're going to stipulate both where the files are. We're going to give the command line needed to run uh, the unattended Office installation. In most cases that's just setup.exe, but I have an unattend associated with my Office install. I'm going to add a couple more applications uh, into the application store essentially. We're going to put in Communicator 2007, another app that I selected in the previous demo, um, and also stipulate the command line. In this case it is ocinstaller.exe. And we're going to add another application uh, into the store just to again show what was selected in the previous uh, demonstration. In this case we'll put in live meeting. We'll stipulate uh, where that is. We'll move the files to speed it up and we will stipulate the command line here which is in this case lminstaller.exe slash silent and there you have it. We've got now applications in our in our deployment workbench and operating systems. Now I can also install packages, things like updates, language packs, etc. for my deployment. And in that case I've just imported some packages and we'll also point this to some drivers that I have. Now the MDT driver store will do P and PID enumeration and basically uh, add the drivers to an image that are needed based on the hardware um, that it detects. So I've now got operating systems, applications, packages, and drivers now in my deployment environment. And just an important note here, what I could do is actually uh, not put in the drivers and packages and just rely on Windows Update for these things. So the next thing I need to do is build a task sequence. So I've right clicked on task sequences, given it an ID, given that a task sequence name. We're going to use a standard client task sequence which will do all of my data migration, apps, etc as part of a fully uh, unattended installation process. We'll give it a name, uh, an organization name, and we'll stipulate the home page here, Woodgrove Bank. Uh, we'll set up the administrator password and that will build me a task sequence as well as an unattend.xml. 
And once we're done with that, then basically we have to uh, choose a new deployment point. In this case, we'll use removable media as I've uh, built off of a USB drive. I've actually imported the deployment folder in that last demonstration to the Windows XP C drive and run it through a script called BDD auto run .wsf. And now I can create uh, my, my media deployment point which again will contain all of the files needed in order to run through that entire process. Now the last thing I need to do once I've created the media deployment point is update that deployment point which will put all the files, the operating systems, uh, everything that I've configured in the deployment workbench into a folder, uh, in this case called media, and that is what I would copy into a bootable USB stick, for example, which would allow me to build out the operating systems that I've put into it. So I could deploy everything from Windows XP to Vista to Windows 7 to Server 2008 and 2008 R2, all from the same stick if I wanted to. And that's basically the entire process end to end as to how you would build uh, that deployment environment. And as you saw with the previous video, what the result of that is is a completely unattended setup once you've kicked off light touch installation that will migrate your files, install the applications that you select, uh, install the OS and restore all of your files and settings back onto the Windows 7 operating system.